IGN just released another reveal for Dragon's Dogma 2, this time being the optional boss, the Sphinx. So therefore, in today's video, I'll be explaining everything you need to know about the Sphinx, its origins in real life, and how that might apply to Dragon's Dogma 2. I will also be going over some hints that were dropped in this interview that was given by IGN and what we can expect for the open world of Dragon's Dogma 2 at the end of the video. Let's start with the real life origin of the Sphinx. The Sphinx is a mix with the head of a woman, the body of a lion, and sometimes the wings of an eagle in parts such as Egypt, Greece, Persia, India, some parts of Asia as well, and even in modern day Freemasonry. In most cultures it's seen as a sign of strength and ferocity, mystery, and also knowledge as well. As mentioned, the Sphinx has many different places where the concept originated, but today we'll be focusing on the Greek interpretation as that seems more closely aligned with what Dragon's Dogma 2 has to offer. This is partially evidenced by the Greek Stadius describing her as a winged monster with pallid cheeks, eyes tainted with corruption, plumes clotted with gore, and talons on livid hands. I think that the eyes tainted with corruption part is a very apt description given the red-eyed version we get in Dragon's Dogma 2, as well as the plumes clotted with gore. But definitely the most relevant part of the Greek description is her place in the Greek tragedy Oedipus Rex. For those of you that didn't have a Greek mythology class in high school or haven't been in theater at all, then you would probably like to know that Oedipus Rex is a tale about a prince who is prophesied to unalive his father and marry his mother, specifically in the city of Thebes as well. His father, knowing the prophecy, then casts his baby out into the forest, leaving him to be unalived by the local wildlife, and then goes on about his day. The baby, being named Oedipus, was actually given to a servant to go cast out into the forest, but the servant felt bad, so they gave him on to a shepherd. Long story short, the prophecy comes true, and it's very gross, but in the middle of that, he does have to make a trip to Thebes. And Thebes is being guarded by a sphinx, and this is where the riddles kick in. The sphinx guarded the city of Thebes and would not allow safe passage unless you could successfully answer her riddles. Therefore, if you could answer her riddles, she would allow you safe passage, and if you could not, she would devour you. And and apparently this was a very big problem because she was really good at asking riddles. So when Oedipus happened upon the Sphinx, whether given to him by a dream or through divine intervention, the Sphinx asked the following. Which creature has one voice and yet becomes four-footed and two-footed and three-footed? The correct answer here being man, for he crawls on all fours as a baby and then walks on two feet as an adult and then uses a walking stick in old age. This would satisfy the four legs crawling on hands and feet. This would obviously satisfy two feet. And then the three feet would be the extra cane that he's walking on. In some other accounts, there's a second rule as well. Like there are two sisters, one gives birth to the other and she in turn gives birth to the first, who are the two sisters, this being night and day of course, and so upon successfully answering the riddle, the Sphinx then casts herself off of a mountain and promptly takes fall damage. This allows Oedipus to enter Thebes and complete the prophecy and all that sort of stuff. That's the long and short of it for the real life version of the Sphinx in Greek mythology, and now let's get into the Dragon's Dogma 2 description here. Indeed, this is what I sought. As with other mythological creatures, Dragon's Dogma 2 really pays attention to the actual description of the monster it's depicting, and the Sphinx looks absolutely breathtaking. It's actually really great how they managed to capture a perfect mix of beauty and uncanny in one singular face. The devs make a mention in their interview that the Sphinx is kind of off by itself and they don't imagine that most players will actually encounter it on their first playthrough. However, if the player does encounter it, they will be given riddles to solve. And given that Dragon's Dogma 2 is an action RPG, these will not be the typical riddles like we discussed in the Greek myth. No, these will be tasks that you'll need your party to fight through and then figure out what the Sphinx actually needs. And in fact, the very first riddle that we see that is solved by IGM is actually more of gathering an item that's dropped from a specific monster. And in the article that IGN wrote up for this, there's actually quite a bit of treasure chests you have to go through in order to resolve this riddle. And it's not always the most valuable item as far as number values go that you need to turn into the Sphinx. Also, can I just say that I think it's a really nice touch whenever the Sphinx turns her head as if to ask, are you sure that that's what you want to do? Are you sure in your decision? 
action here. And just the look in the eyes, man, this is scary, but in a good way. I really, really like it. That's the only riddle we actually get a description of, but it looks like there are about four or five more that we can expect in the final product. There's also a fleeting mention here of fighting the Sphinx, whether or not you want to actually do it, and whether or not the fighting will actually be straightforward. It seems like the fighting of the Sphinx might be a riddle in and of itself, meaning that there might be specific gimmicks you need to follow in order to defeat the Sphinx, or there actually might be specific items you need to use, or that sort of thing. As far as the fight will go, we actually have a decent reference in Dragon's Dogma Online that we can use, although it looks a little bit different than what we see in the footage from IGN. I took my time to look up some gameplay from Dragon's Dogma Online, and it appears that the Sphinx mostly has physical attacks very similar to both the Chimera and the Griffin from Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. There's a lot of flying involved, there's mostly physical attacks, and then there's this random debilitation area that she will place here and there as part of her magic. In the Dragon's Dogma 2 version, we do see a glimpse of her kicking the player character off whenever they try to climb on top of her, and beyond that, we don't really see a whole lot. We do see some arcane missiles being cast from her wings, especially on these purple spots on her plumes, which personally I think is a nice touch, and we also see what looks to be a teleportation move as well, but nothing really beyond that. And honestly, that about does it for all the information we have on the Sphinx in Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm really interested to see what sort of unique rewards that we'll get from actually finding the Sphinx and then solving her riddles. And from what I have heard, as far as the riddles go, you only have one shot to actually unlock them. If you answer wrong, those chests behind her are locked forever. And I personally cannot wait to see how many different options that we'll have to resolve her riddles and how difficult they'll actually be. I hope that they're fairly difficult. And as far as the rest of the interview goes that was given by IGN, it seems like we'll get plenty of these sort of opportunities to find many new hidden areas. And of course, as they mentioned here, there will be, of course, areas that you're meant to focus on one after the other as part of the story. But there's also many different hidden areas with probably many different hidden monsters that we've seen, particularly from Dragon's Dogma Online and other cut content uh, that we'll be able to encounter. And personally, I just can't wait for all these extra features. I think it's going to be a very good thing in the final product. Can't wait to play it. But that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys for joining in and I hope you have a good rest of your day. I will see you later.